North Korea has been making headlines due to an alarming concern about the state of its nuclear program and how potentially dangerous it is for the United States and its allies. However, what is equally worrisome is North Korea's systemic human rights violations. Welcome to Cure for Conflict, I'm your host Jose Cambrellan, and in today's episode, we'll be examining North Korea's alarming human rights record, why President Kim Jong-un is so insistent on suppressing basic human rights, why the United States a paragon of free speech and individual freedom is turning a blind eye, and how North Korean society has the potential to slowly transform for the better. According to a report by the Human Rights Watch organization, North Korea remains to this day one of the most repressed countries in the world in terms of human rights due to the continued rule of the Kim family and the Workers' Party of Korea since the end of the Korean War seven decades ago. Today, President Kim Jong-un continues his family's tradition of human rights violations through public executions, forced labor, travel restrictions, as well as strongly enforcing and encouraging propaganda, kidnapping, persecuting those with religious connections, and unfortunately many more inhumane acts that are swept under the rug by the state. When the United Nations Commission of Inquiry reported on human rights in North Korea in 2014, they reported that the systemic widespread and gross human rights violations committed by the government included murder, enslavement, torture, imprisonment, rape, forced abortion, and other sexual violence and constituted crimes against humanity. Although the country ratified four key international human rights treaties and included right protection in its constitution to gain the attention of the rest of the developed world, in reality, the government conspicuously continued to spread its policy of prohibiting independent journalism and political opposition. North Korea even has a classification system that groups people by how loyal they are to the state, further shutting down opposition by harming those who dare to speak against the government. The best way the government maintains this illusion is through propaganda. Propaganda is arguably the strongest weapon in Kim's arsenal, as it allows the state to brainwash the people into believing what Kim wants them to believe. According to Nikolaus Kristof, an opinion writer for the New York Times, regarding his trips to North Korea, he says, no other country has managed to use technology, propaganda, and the police to control a people so tightly. When the famine was particularly prominent in the 90s, a state broadcaster hailed the benefits of dieting, creating a national slogan revolving around two daily meals and citing a man who ate too much rice and exploded. Furthermore, those who try to tune their radios to receive Chinese or South Korean stations are automatically sent to prison camps. With conditions like these, it is easy to see how difficult it is to stand apart from the government. For a country such as the United States, a beacon of individual freedoms and free speech, our blind eye to North Korea's human rights violations shows the incompetency about our current administration. But for someone like Donald Trump, who actively condemns any news outlets who criticize him, it's easy to understand why he would admire somebody like Kim Jong-un. For North Korea, admiration on behalf of the President of the United States does nothing but bolster Kim's existing propaganda efforts, allowing Kim Jong-un to portray himself not only to his people, but to the world as someone that America holds in high regard. Given the United States' global influence, President Trump can easily talk to Kim Jong-un about fixing his country, improving human rights on all fronts. Due to their relationship, he can encourage the freedom of those who are innocent in labor camps or free those who were kidnapped from other countries for no reason. If anything, North Korea is a fan of very big gestures and having the President of the United States be such a loud voice in their media can, in a way, be better for human rights. However, given that the nuclear threat has given reason for U.S. policymakers to give North Korea some breathing space on the human rights front, change is still possible on the inside. According to Robert Maley of the International Crisis Group, North Koreans are more willing to tackle certain issues as over time they've evolved from downright denying the existence of labor camps to acknowledging they at least exist. Furthermore, North Korea recently allowed a United Nations speaker to discuss the issues of disabilities to them. Therefore, even if change is brought to North Korea slowly, it's much better than not having any change at all. Thanks for watching Cure for Conflict. I've been Jose Cambrellan, and be sure to follow us on the social media links provided and check out our other videos. Have a great day.